Ciao tutti, ciao Milanisti. Uh, I'm Luca Laporta from the Milan Guys, and this is the first official live TMG podcast. Unfortunately, the other co-owner of the account, he has an exam tomorrow, so he has to study tonight, uh, Mike. So he sends his best wishes. At, to me, honestly, I think he's listening while he's studying. So it's unfortunate he can't be here today. But I have two very special guests. I have Matt Santangelo. You've probably seen his work for Italian Football Daily and uh, the Gentleman Ultra. And I have my friend, my personal friend I actually met at school, I'm a huge Milan fan, Karas. And we're just going to talk about many things today, including uh, the match, the, the loss on Sunday, the next match against Crotone on Sunday, and Europa League and the Mercato and real situations. So guys, Matthew, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Luca? Great to be on the, the podcast here. Special moment for you guys. Oh, huge moment. Yeah, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Karas, how are you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm good, uh, man. Great uh, to be on here, man. It's very special. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, I'm really excited. We're uh, we're trying. We're hopefully gonna have a maybe like a a couple a couple podcasts a month here to get our viewers in and get our opinion, especially during the Mercato month. It's gonna be pretty big. So let's get right into it. All right. Two one loss to Empoli at the San Siro on Sunday. T- a, a chance to go five points up on Inter. I, I, it's like it's tough because when Milan dominate the whole game, and they dominate the whole game, and and two defensive lapses goes in the back of our net, and you lose two one at home. Matt, what do you, what's your take on the game on Sunday? Obviously, it was a game that Milan should have uh, even without a guy like Alessio Romagnoli, who was a late scratch. This is a game they should have definitely handled, um, and it felt like that. I had that type of vibe of a game where. Uh, Milan, we're gonna come come out victorious somehow, some way. It feels like that's been the, the that's been the formula this year. They yeah. found a way to you know scratch and claw for late game victories. Um, we saw Lapadula score late, so you know it kind of had that type of vibe. But it just unfortunately, it just uh, you know a couple chances didn't fall uh, Milan's way, and then um, luckily, I mean luckily for Milan, this game wasn't a, an actual utter disaster. Um, a couple Empoli chances were squandered late thanks to Donnarumma's efforts and goals. So um, it, it definitely a, a, a tough one to take, especially, um, you know, with the, with the opportunity to go five points ahead of Inter, really keep the pressure on the, the teams they're chasing for Europa League. But uh, the, the thing I think, you know, Milan fans have to understand is that, you know, there's going to be games where, you, you know, you slip up and, you know, that you maybe, you know, take advantage, you, you take for granted a side, you know, a team, especially like Empoli, who's the worst defensive team in the league, you know, you, you'd expect a couple more goals, but, you know, it just sometimes just uh, that's just how it happens. And I think the mindset here has to be to just look towards Crotone and, and just, you know, chart to finish the season strong and see where, where you end up at the, uh, at the end of the year. No, yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, no, Kadas, what, what you, what's your take on the game? So I actually agree with Matt on a lot of, uh, on a lot of things. It's like th- when I was watching the game, it was almost like I was watching – I wasn't watching this year's Milan. I was watching like 2015, 2016 Milan or like 1450. It was like that's scary. Yeah. And <laughs> I think they went in with the mentality is that even if we lose, like we're still ahead of Inter, we're still in that sixth spot. So I think they kind of like relaxed a bit for this game. I don't know why. But that was that was that was a pretty bad display, in my opinion. I think they like they should have went in. And they should have won that game. But, I think. I think. Yeah. And just to sorry to interrupt. I think you know it's also a lot of people that were, um, of course, in the aftermath of the game, and we're going to get into this. Um, a lot of the after, and a lot in the aftermath fell. Uh, a lot of blame was placed on Dishio and a couple others. But I think you know people. I think somewhat forget the fact that Suso had a very poorly taken penalty. I think that at least mm-hmm. Milan could have had a point from this game. Um, um, you know, which I feel like it was a very big blow to them, just considering the fact that. You know, it, it was a poorly taken penalty. I know Skorupski had a fantastic game, and you know, hats off to him. But I think Milan should have at least had a point from this game, even if they were able to convert the penalty. But um, you know, just again, for unfortunately, it was just didn't go their way. Yeah, you know what? It's just it's, it's tough because again, I got like it's tough because when you look at it as as a season from like as a whole, apart from apart from uh, the game against Genoa when we lost three nothing. Milan could have won every single game this year. You know what I mean? Like they, they've been. Right, right. They've I see been, what you're getting at. 
like yeah. not like obviously, but like they've been aside from the three nothing the Genoa, they've been in every single game. Right, and yeah. then I think, and then I think that's a lot of the the difference between you know past years to what Kara said about you know how certain games had that type of you know this felt like one of those games of of a couple of years ago under like Inzaghi or even Seydorf or you know even Mihalovic last year you know but that's the difference between this Milan and the old Milan clubs of of old is that you felt like with, you know under Montella a lot of those guys are hungry and you felt like you know somehow somewhere Milan are going to scratch and claw it's not going to be pretty but they're going to wind up beating the team in Empoli that they should be. And, you know, again, it's just, it's unfortunate, but I think, you know, Milan need to understand that they need to, to just finish the season strong. I think you're, you know, there's a lot of things that are not guaranteed. I think you enter are in a bad, in a bad spot right now. Um, Fiorentina are going to come up a little bit, you know, so it's going to be interesting. I think the, the one thing I always tell, I always say to people, fans of teams is that just take care of your business don't worry about what everyone else is doing because I think you put the pressure on them and if they slip up, it just, it works to your advantage. But, you know, again, a team like Crotone, they just, that's where Milan, that's where Milan really have to start their, their sprint to the finish line and, and come away with a commanding performance. Not, not a game that's close and it goes down to the last minute. I'm talking a game where they, they score a goal or two early and they really kill this game off. Yeah. Uh, I also feel that, uh, you know, Empoli, uh, they always say like teams at the bottom are generally the ones that are most hungry and the ones that are like they're trying to avoid relegation as much as possible. So you can kind of see it in the Empoli players like they were dying on the pitch. Well, well we were really like we were trying to like hold off. Rather, I don't know. I felt like we, 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 we should have had more chances, and I feel like the chances that we did have, they were horribly taken. Like Baca's chance, Baca should have buried that chance in my opinion. And also, too, to your point is, you know, not, not to beat a dead horse, but a team like Empoli, they they got a team like Crotone breathing down their necks. And they found that, you know, Crotone have been playing well in recent weeks and they're really trying to fend off relegation. So, you know, that was a big that was a big victory for Empoli for sure. But that's what's going to be difficult about Crotone. I think, you know, they, they, they had a good victory against Sampdoria in a tough environment in Genova. So, you know, that's that's something that, you know, they really got to be weary of and, and not take lightly. Yeah, I think that um, we should, like, I think that the good, beautiful, beautiful thing about the Serie A is that a lot of teams, whether they're, like, lower in the standings or higher up, like, they, they, they can all be dangerous because all of them have their own aspirations and they, they try really hard to achieve them, which I think, like, that's, what's, that's what makes it, that's what makes this really competitive. Although Juve then, kind uh, of has it locked down. In terms unfor- of unfortunately, Juve and Merida, yeah. right? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you know what, though? You know what, actually, just to your point there, people, nobody thinks that about the City. Yeah, everybody says that City yeah, is one team league and the Premier League is all this and that. But really, in reality, a person who watched City yeah, will, will know that it's actually really competitive. And the race for Europa League right now, even the race for second place, it's it's tight. It's so tight. Yeah. And there's so many, and you know what? I was talking to some friends, and, and I was telling them the last season, Milan had 57 points, right? We had 57 points in the year. Right now, we have 58, but we had 57 points to conclude the year last year, and we just missed out on the sixth spot for Europa League, right? Right now, we have 58 points, and we're still sixth place. So, 58 points last year would have secured a spot in Europa League, and this year, it's going to take like maybe 70 points. So you can tell teams are getting better. Lazio, strong side. Lazio's lineup is better than a lot of other sides in Europe. I'm telling, like it's. I'm not saying this with a bias. It's just true. And there's no easy game in City. Yeah, honestly, there's no easy game because teams are so tactical and defensive that they can scrape out a one nothing winner, a zero zero draw from you. And then we saw that even with Atlanta. What a strong side! You thought after they sold Gagliardini, and uh, after they sold them. In, in January, you think they would drop off a little bit? No, they haven't. They've been right there. But anyways, talking about Milan here. You know what? Aside from that match on 2-1 two, two, on Sunday, we have another match against the relegation side, Crotone and Calabri on Sunday. And honestly, I know there's for people who don't want to make your open league, it's a must win. It's a must win. You have to get three points next Sunday. You can't drop six points to Empoli and Crotone and expect to make your open league. Matthew, what do you think? 
Oh, of course. I mean, you know, it's there's no way of there's no beating around the bush here. This is a must-win match for Milan, especially with a lot of other teams like you just mentioned earlier. Fiorentina are creeping up; they're starting to kind of finish strong. And you know, there's there's always you don't you just don't want to finish the season strong. Any number number one, number two, you don't want to give off that vibe that you know Milan are not a strong team. I think that it's lasting impressions are so important for Milan, especially going into the summer. They don't want they want to be able to say. You know, they finished the season strong. They qualified for Euro, the Europa League. They have this new ownership, these new ambitions, and this new vision for the future. And that's all those things collectively should hopefully appeal to some big targets this summer, which we're going to talk about, of course. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you need three points next Sunday. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, Deshilio suspended. We'll get into his situation later. Deshilio suspended. Jose Sosa suspended. And it looks like Locatelli will take his spot, and Vagnoni will come in on the left on left back, and Calabria right back. La Padula should start, and because you can't have Baca starting with that with that sitter he missed, he literally missed the ball on the goal line like a baby could have put the ball in. He missed it, like <laughs> like a like a, a one year old kid could have swung his leg and put it across the goal line. So. Olafia's daughter could have scored that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, and. You know what? I'm si- I'm kind of sick and tired of of a game like that. Like I, it left me with a sour taste in my mouth, right? So you know what? Come back. I, I believe in Montella. Montella knows he's been our best coach for a while, um, and you can tell because it, imagine uh, Vincenzo Montella with like really quality players. Imagine and like imagine Montella with a quality midfield. Oh. It's safe to say, yeah. It's safe to say that uh, that. Basically, this uh, this this Milan side this year has been really exciting, like to results for results. Think about it, right? You had the Sassuolo comeback, uh, you had the Inter comeback last week, you had the Pasalic goal in the 90th minute with eight men, right? You had so many different things that it's just been an entertaining year. But you have to finish strong. You have to finish. You have to get to Europa League, and not because I love Europa League or anything, but you know what? It's it's getting stronger every year. And you, we're going to get into this now, but to qualify for Europe, a player wants to play in Europe. That has a pull on players and negotiations. So let's talk about that. Karas, do you think, this is the, honestly, this is a yes or no opinion question. Do you think you're, you're, like Europa League, just for us in case in point, do you think Europa League will have a pull on players? Uh, yes. No, not necessarily. Uh, I think mainly players in higher clubs that don't get enough playing time, those people will probably want to play because like it's it's Europe and they're almost guaranteed a starting position. Especially once we start selling off a lot of our like starters that aren't performing as well. Like maybe if we sell off Baca or if the Shilio leaves and we start getting in some quality players that maybe are not getting enough playing time. Like for example, Isco, for example, he's not getting too much playing time in uh, Real. Uh, if if we can get someone like him and he starts playing for us, uh, I'll, yeah, it will be pretty good. Also, it's also an incentive because the Europa League. If you know, if for example, we end up qualifying and winning the Europa League, like we automatically get into the Champions League, which is you know, I think it's uh, some players, some a lot of quality players would like, bank on that. In my opinion, yeah, Matt, what do you think? No, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, that's any player's ambition. They just want to play on the biggest stages under the brightest lights and they want to win trophies. So it's only natural that I think, you know, like for some people that are saying, you know, it's better, it's good that Milan misses out on Europa League. I, I don't buy into that because I think, you, you know, for a team like Milan who have so many, uh, you know, they have, so, they have so much success and tradition in competition, European competition specifically, you want to be a part of it. You want to see your team playing those midweek fixtures and, you know, playing those games and, and you're seeing a packed crowd against even if it's a team that's you know a lower level team that you know most people that never heard of but you know you want to see your team just playing in a competitive Europa League competition so I mean I, I think it's you know it's something that Milan definitely definitely have to have to aspire to to qualify for but and that's also going to have a factor and of course to the Mercato it's in you know what type of player like an example like an Obama Yank which we'll talk about of course I'm, I'm assuming would he want to leave a team like Dortmund, who's 
you know, always in the Champions League, that are they're always in somewhat top three, top four for in, in the Bundesliga. Would he want to, you know, get up and leave and join Milan and not be in your in 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 Europe? So I, yeah. I mean, yes, you can pay you can pay certain guys to the point where it doesn't matter. I mean, case in point is is the Chinese players. I mean, people going to China, excuse me, to play. Um, for a big wage is like Graziano Pele, for example, or even a guy like Oscar who left Chelsea for a big money. Oh. Um, so I, I think that you know the, the important thing here is for again, you know, I'll, I emphasize this quite a bit is is to to qualify for Europe. That's the first step, and I think by qualifying for Europe and getting in a competition, a known competition, a UEFA competition, it, yeah. it opens up that opportunity for people to say, okay, you know, Milan's back in Europe. They're they're back in the thick of things. They're 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 becoming their relevant relevant side again on this stage. You know that's something I want to be a part of. So I, I think this is this is urgent for Milan to just get back in Europe in some way, shape, or form. Um, and of course, the best way to do that is through the Europa League. No, yeah, no, for, it's it's for sure. It, it's just like I've seen a lot. I follow you know you've seen Twitter people and stuff like that, and they've said like I, I don't want to qual like the Europa League is a farmer competition. I don't want to qualify for it. But you know what? I know many people say, but like this has been like a—you could call it a rebuild, right? For me, it's been like a rebuilding stage. The last few years, if you want to compare it to like you know, in like North American sports, like a rebuild process. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, now with new owners and stuff, and there's a youth movement. We have the youngest team in Syria. We have one of the youngest teams in the top five leagues. With Donnarumma, of course, Donnarumma's age brings that really down. <laughs> but and Locatelli, of course. And, yeah, and Locatelli and even Calabria. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's a young lineup, right? It's a young lineup. And you know what? To make your opening this year, it shows they're making progress. It shows they're making progress to the rebuild. Um, basically, you make your Open League. You know, do whatever. You don't have to win your Open League. Just do well in it. Bring some more players in. And then make that transition. Be the, the top, well, now it'll be top four teams, thank God. They're going to have four spots in Italy. Italy deserves four spots. I'm sick and tired of seeing, you know, these random clubs from Europe with Italy with a less spot, with one less spot. So in 2018, when there's four spots, Milan have to be the fourth best, at least the fourth best Serie A team. With purchases this summer, or this summer, next summer, with the new owners who promise to make Milan great again, you've got to bring in more talent, more quality, especially in the midfield. The midfield is the anchor between your your offense and your defense right so you you need a strong midfield to have a strong to have a strong team look at all the strong teams in the world they have a strong midfield um look at all the strong teams in italy you got you yeah. I mean, they've taken they've they, in recent years they've lost Vidal, pirlo they sold pogba but you got guys like pianic you got even guys like tomas rincon who's more of like that bully in the midfield who'll break up play and just kind of makes things uncomfortable but you see the midfield ranks the midfields of the top clubs in in italy you yep. know you see lazio they got guys like even a young guy like Cataldi who's on loan they got um milinkovic savic they have yep. all Good the player. you know Bilia. you got you, you got you know napoli who have like five quality oh, midfielders yeah. and a lot of them are young yeah. So I mean, this is that's Diawara. They got Zielinski, my boy Zielinski, um, yeah, Alan, they got Hamshik, and, and you know they and they they just they have and Jorginho. So they got depth. These a lot of these teams, and that's what that's the thing that Milan has been lacking, I think, for so long. And then so many people have been just begging for is just an impact midfield or mid, uh, excuse me, impact midfielder or midfielders to really just drive this team to yeah, the no. level. Even, even Roma yeah. to a lesser degree have quite like Angolan, Angolan, Paredes, and they may even get Kessie at least if if reports are true. So, mm-hmm. you know, the Milan that's the that's the area that Milan have been lacking in for years. It feels like ever since you know the the, the guys like uh, Pirlo left, Seydorf left, and everyone retired in like 2012. They've just been lacking yeah. with that that big yeah. playmaker and that big dip yeah. maker in the midfield. And Bonaventura is good, right? Bonaventura is really good, but you know what? You can only do so much as one player, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a midfield featuring Bonaventura with other class guys, that safe to say at the class midfield. That's a quality midfield. Yeah. And this is why if Montella, he has a contract for next year, but he needs to get an extension. I'm really liking his work. You can tell this Milan team is different with Montella at the, at the touchline, and and uh, and Bonaventura needs to be he needs to be hopefully as he's going to come back stronger as ever. Um, but he needs to be part of that 4-3-3. He needs to be part of the 4-3 in the midfield. In the midfield, though, not on the left wing. Because I think uh, I think we need... 
we need quality in the left wing too, but but putting Bonaventura there will will take will take something out of the midfield. And I think midfield is the biggest problem, especially if we can bring De La Feu back. Bonaventura put right in the midfield. But you know what? Let's go right into uh into into Mercato talk. So with the De La Feu situation, right? Barcelona apparently I personally I think it's just this is just a business thing. They're just, they're they're saying they want to bring De La Feu back. I don't think they actually want to bring him back. I think they, they're they're saying that so they can raise the price from like they can raise the price whoever whoever's going to pay it. So because there's no way De La Feu is in their plans. Where we played the the one game every three months. What's the point of that? I, I don't know about that though because the, my argument against that is you know a team like Barcelona who. They're, they're, every year they're playing in three competitions. They're playing in La Liga, they're playing for the Copa del Rey, and they're playing for the Champions League. So the, the, those teams need depth. And I think they see a guy like De La Feu who can be a viable option off the bench and occasionally spell a, guy, a, a, spell a breather for a guy like, um, you know, like a guy like Neymar, for instance, or, you know, a guy who can play on either wing and be, you know, bring pace, bring energy, bring, you know, creativity to the wing. So I, I wouldn't go as far as saying that, you know, a guy like De La Feu going back to Barcelona would just be wasted. I think he would be, he would be utilized quite well, but that also depends on who their manager is. That's mm-hmm. also no, a big thing. And sure. I think that's, that's something that is it kind of somewhat in Milan's favor when negotiating to try and bring him back because I think, you know, De La Feu, he's, he's coming to life again under, under Montella and, and in Italy. Plus, he's also alongside a guy like Suso, who he's played with at the national level. So he's comfortable in Milan. I think his intentions are to stay in Milan. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, everything has to check out. The money has to make sense. And ultimately, they have to be able to work out a deal. Otherwise, he's, he's going to go you know, probably return to Barcelona. Yeah, no, I know. And this is what's tough. But you know what? If we can't bring him in, we are rumored to bring in uh, Kita Balde from Lazio. He's coming off a hat trick against Palermo on the, at the weekend. He'd be a great signing. Yeah, I think he'd be a good signing for the left wing. He's a good player um, for the right sign. price. For the right price. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to break a bank on him, but, you know, for the right price, I'm thinking 15 to 20 million euro range. Some a guy like him. Uh, who knows, though? I don't know because Lotito's kind of crazy. He drives the prices for his players sometimes. Um, but, yeah, and then let's go to some striker talk here. So this was just tweeted uh, a little while ago from the Milan Bible and stuff. So Murat, Morata, he scored today actually for Real Madrid. He, he has a really good goal per minute ratio. He's on, he really he's we're really interested in him apparently. Um, what I'm reading here. So Aubameyang remains the number one target. This, this is according to the Gazeta dello Sport, by the way. So Aubameyang is the main target. He scored today too against Bayern in the uh, FKB Poco Poco. Um, he scored today and. Morata is the direct alternative, but Chelsea and Man United are also interested in Morata. So it's going to be hard to, especially if Chelsea wins the league this year and Conte wants to bring him in. If Conte wants to bring him in, I guarantee you Morata will go to him first just because they have a connection. Um, but he's the alternative of Bomiang. Of course, the dream is Belotti. Everybody wants Belotti. Of course. But, I wouldn't want but realistically, is. Like they're they're not he's not he's not arriving he's he's not there's no way he's not going anywhere he's gonna stay at Torino this year he literally said it he said I'm gonna stay here there's no way there's no way Torino sells him especially because Torino's having a pretty good year like they're pretty good they have some skilled players and Mihalovic is a good coach over there too so I I don't I don't see Belotti leaving so honestly I can see Belotti in the future if we have the funds but right now Morata Aubameyang these are good players and. I'll take either or, to be honest with you, because honestly, Baca, I like, but I do like Carlos Baca. But you know what? It gets hard, though, because Baca never had a, a great midfield service. He didn't have it. We don't have it here. So, I mean, it's hard to really judge him. I guarantee you, if Baca went to a team with lots of service, he'd score 20 plus goals. Yeah, but I'd, I'd argue against that, though. If you look at the, the teams in Italy and you look at the teams in Europe, for that matter, the, the dynamic is changing. Everything's changing and evolving. The way teams play and set up is different. So a guy like Baca, who's mostly just he's, – he's not a very good link-up player. He's more of like a poacher, a guy who in, you know, in the penalty area will finish his chances. 
Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know last year he didn't get that many chances, but the chances he did get, he did convert, which is obviously what you want from your striker. But I think that me, the, for, for Milan, the way they, the way they operate, the way under, they operate under Montella, they need a guy who, who can drop into the midfield, who, who can make runs and, and you know, who can do a little bit of different things. And I think, obviously, a guy like Aubameyang would be fantastic. He, he really checks off all the boxes that you look for in a modern-day uh, forward. But I think, you know, you got to be realistic as well. And, of course, what you just mentioned about Belotti, I don't see the, the, the urgency for a team like Torino to have to sell Belotti, just given the fact that he really is the face of their club, number one. Number two... He has plenty of interest, and he has a huge uh, release clause that needs to be activated. And number three, um, you know, he, he he there's really no urgency. I don't see why Torino would have to sell unless, of course, the, the money is just too good to pass up. But I don't see any team throwing a Pogba-type uh, uh, offer at him. I hope not. You know, I don't see – I just don't see that for – uh, a guy who's only done it for one year, no offense yeah. to Pelotti, he's a fantastic yeah. player, but I think a lot of teams are still going to be a little bit hesitant to throw that much money at them when they can go after a guy like Chelsea, for instance, you know, uh, Lukaku or, you know, a, um, a Marata. So, so, so you know, j- just keep that in mind when you look at some of the targets that Milan are looking for. I don't know. I personally think that uh, ever like you guys are, are... – Milan fans in general are focusing on the wrong aspect. I think we should mainly focus like our big, we should splash big on uh, midfielders because a lot of our midfielders are leaving. We have a lot of midfielders on loan and the midfielders that we do have left, uh, a lot, like all of them are injury prone, like mm-hmm. um, what's his Bertolacci. face? Bertolacci. Bertolacci, yeah. What's his face? <laughs> Bertolacci. Yeah, Montolivo as yeah, well. Mont- Montolider? Yeah, Montalider. <laughs> so I think we should we should at least get oh Pasolich as well. Pasolich is leaving. Mm, uh, we we'll should, talk about that after. Yeah, we should at least get some at least two or three quality midfielders to fill that in before we start looking at an attacker. I agree. Honestly, I agree. I agree, I agree because a good midfield we have. I think we have like honestly. Here's how I look at it: if if Baca and Lapadula stay, right, it's kind of like a one-two punch kind of thing, and we get a solid midfield with solid wingers around him. We already have one with Suso. I think Baca will score 20 goals again. I think he will. I think Lapadula will get 10. Lapadula has six, and he's only played 800 minutes. Not even, I don't think. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, just, it's, just, it's hard to say because if anybody, if any strikers leaving the club this, this summer, it's Baca. It's not going to be Lapadula. Because Lapadula is a good guy to have in the club. He works really, really hard. Really, really hard. I, I'm a huge fan of Lapadula because he works – like even when the ball, he's not going to win it. He'll still run for it. And kind of reminds me of, the Gattu- of Gattuso. He has like, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's, he's like a striker version of Gattuso. Yeah, he's like yeah. – his mentality, He has, I think he has a champion mentality. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know what? Let's, let's go into more Mercato talk. So Pasalic – Apparently, we are keen on bringing. We were keen on keeping him back, kind of like a Van Ginkel situation. We actually want Pasalic back. He scored some key goals for us this year. Um, you know what? My my actual uh, I'm trying to say assessment of Pasalic is he he's an okay player. He doesn't touch the ball enough in the midfield. He doesn't touch the ball. He only gets like thirty touches a game, forty touches a game sometimes. And in a fourth year, he should be touching the ball more, but for some reason, he's always in the right place at the right time. So I, I don't know. It seems like every time he has a chance to score, every game he plays, he um, he's very good at getting into positions like off the ball, like on the yeah. ball. He's not very like technically speaking, he's not very good. But off the ball, he can he can make these runs, these runs across, and somehow just get get to the ball, which is amazing. No, for sure. He, he just needs to work on other aspects of his game. And I think if we can get him for a cheap price like anything maybe 10 million or under i think that would be pretty good i think yeah. the one thing that you that you look for look a look at Pasolich and you look at a couple other midfielders specifically um you know there's a guy a guy like Pasolich, he doesn't do any he doesn't do anything spectacularly but he does a lot of things good which i think you do need those yeah. types of midfielders who you know 
especially when you're trying to, you know, you, as, as a guy off the bench. And, and I think that's, that's the one thing that Milan fans, I really don't think they're going to be on board with is the fact that if you're going to tell, tell uh, you know, the Milan fan base that, you know, we have this new idea, this new vision, and we really have this revolution we want to create, I don't think you're going to sell them on it, and I don't think the Chinese ownership is going to sell them on it. If you tell if you tell them that Paslich is going to be a starting midfielder or like your fourth midfielder, I think he's a he's a, he should be playing the role on a good team that wants to compete for Europe. He should be your fourth, fifth, fourth maybe fifth option, um, kind of like a Sturaro, a Rincon type of midfielder yeah. that, that for like Juventus. I think. Listen, you know, I, I love. There's certain guys I love. I love their energy and I love their passion and I love their commitment to the team. But I think the reality here is that I think if Milan want to have serious ambition to get back to being a prominent team in Europe, they can't sell themselves short by sticking with guys who you know. Oh, he gives it at all. He tries hard. They need quality players. That's that's what's going to separate them from being a a Europa League contender to being a legitimate candidate to contend for Scudetto or at least a top four finish. Yeah, no, I completely agree. You can't. It's like you can't be. It's 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 a business, right? You can't be nice to guys because they worked hard. Like, sure, you can give them give them a spot on the team, give them the odd you know substitution for some energy. Uh, Andrea Poli, Mister Energy. Right. Um, uh, actually, to be honest, with you, I love Andrea Poli. So I, I, I love him on the bench. I love when he comes on to defend the lead because he's always he always runs a lot and he's he's always so hard on the ball and everything. So, but you're right. You can't you can't settle for guys like Pasolich and guys like Bertolacci. Even though Bertolacci, I, I don't blame Galliani for signing him for 20 million euro because he was amazing for Genoa that one season but he was in an advanced position you got to understand that at Genoa he was a really a more like an attacking midfielder and he was getting yeah. forward he had what something like eight nine goals so something like that and he scored so bangers too like they were like a lot goals. different and even for Milan you know we've seen him in various different roles I mean last year we saw him you know on the side we saw him even a couple times this year if I'm correct in saying so he played as a as a like a deeper playmaker Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was a, he was a uh, regista for a few games. That's what I'm saying. You can't like those guys, yeah. like especially those guys that are they have quality and they've shown it in spurts. You got to be wary of when you purchase because I think if they're not in that same same position, not to mention with a different club, with a big club like Milan. No offense to Genoa, you, you kind of run a run the risk of getting a guy who really doesn't perform. Mm-hmm. No, for sure, and it's 100. percent You know what? Let's just I'm just gonna move on to the next uh, Mercato, and this is a huge situation. Mattia De Scilio, a player who he's born in Milano. He's been brought up through the ranks of the youth academy. He's re- he's wearing the cap and armband because Abati's out for the rest of the season, and these links to Juventus are really heating up. and And now I don't know if you guys heard, but after the the loss to Empoli, he got whistled off. Right when he got subbed off, he yeah. got whistled, tons of whistles. And his his family car got. I don't think he even had a family to be honest. Does he have a kid? I don't know. No, but apparently, his parents. Oh, yeah, oh, his, his parents. parents okay, yeah. him and his parents. Yeah, him and his parents. His family car got stopped, and they got into a heated discussion. Apparently, the fans were asking him why he doesn't play with like emotion or something. Is that is that what you guys heard too? I'm I think not it, sure. I think it was something like that. I saw some people say, you know, the way that people kind of, I kind of attacked Dishio, um, was the fact that you know a guy who's wearing a captain's armband. He should be the type of guy that's getting in the face of the referee to kind of separate, you know, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. you know, kind of break up yeah. a, a, a scuffle, you know, the guy that goes there and kind of shows that passion and, you know, really takes control of the, uh, of the team, especially down the stretch when they're trying to either go after a victory or hold on to a victory. Um, and I think that's why a lot of times people, they don't see that about the Shigio. And I think for a guy wearing a, the armband for a team like Milan, who've had so many great captains and so many energetic captains before them, that mm-hmm. they, they expect the guy to live up to that reputation. And I think, you know, some guys are not captain material. They can be with the team for X amount of years. They can be grow through the ranks and have that energy. But some guys are just not fit to be captains. And I think maybe Deshio isn't that type of guy. He doesn't have that type of, of attitude and demeanor about him. He kind of he has the, the attitude that he's going to go out there and just try and do the job. Yeah. Whereas a guy like you know, you see like a guy like Gattuso, even in the later part of his year, uh, later part of his career with Milan, when he was starting, he was a guy. I mean, you saw him in the Champions League. He went up to the Tottenham coach Joe Jordan and and yeah. headbutted him. <laughs> that so, was awesome. so, so those are the types of things that I think that not those things, of course, extreme and yeah, headbutting, no, yeah. but yeah. they're looking for that grinta and those things that green when you tone. put on that armband, it really means something, and you really kind of fill the role of of a captain. And I think that's what a lot of times people have that issue with yeah. with the Shio. 
Yeah, you yeah, know what? It's, it's true because I remember uh, it was in the yeah, summer when this one, my, uh, uh, one friend, 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 friend came from huge Milan fan. Like I asked him about the Milan players and stuff, and there's a small echo. Let's see. Let's see. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Um, uh, so basically, I asked him about the players, right? He's a big Milan fan. I'm like, so what do you think about the Shilio? And the first thing he said was, he put a straight face. Said the Shilio is always. He said he's sempre così, like this. He's always. He always a straight face. Like he just straight faced it. Like he doesn't this smile. Is a lot of passion. No, he doesn't get sad. He doesn't get mad. He's just. He's, it looks like he's just like average <laughs> all the time. And that's what a lot of people have been saying that the Shilio has been absolutely mediocre and absolutely average after been named the next Maldini like five years ago. Um, and you know I hate when people call people like that. Cause I think it ruins careers, honestly, and for call the next Maldini and stuff. But Aside from that, Matita Shilio, apparently the, uh, Massimo Mirabelli uh, is going to have a meeting with his agent and De Shilio in, the, in this weekend or, or soon, and he's going to see what he demands. Apparently, if De Shilio wants to stay, we want to keep him. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't want to stay, then I think we're going to sell him this summer to get something for him because his contract ends next summer. So if he does want to leave, he'll be gone. I think in around the 10 million euro range. Uh, I think that's what I read. So honestly, and here's my thing. If he goes to Juventus, he's officially, he's a, he's a dead player to me. He's dead to me. I don't, I can't, I can't support that. You don't go to a rival club like that, especially think, when you play for Milan. I think Chelsea was actually interested in him. Yeah, Conte, Conte likes him. Yeah, so I think if we sell him to Chelsea, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't be too, like, mad me either, about right? it. Me like, I, I would be, I'd be happy for him. But it's a thing of like going to a rival club, especially to like Juve or Inter, for example. But I know Inter is not following him. But going like whenever like a player that we know and love just goes to like a different to like a rival team that like you just know you don't like, it's kind of like a stab in the back. And yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know what? It's just it's being a traitor, right? And yeah. you don't go to. Milan, like this is what everybody, this is what I've been telling everybody about when they said Donnarumma is going to go to Juve. I said, listen, Napoli's best player went to Juve. Uh, Pjanic was one of the Roma's best players. He went to Juve. Milan, you, we're, you're not going to see one of our guys trade for that for that club. I, I don't think so. And I hope the Chilio doesn't. Because if he does, I, 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 wish in his, I wish the worst in his footballing career. Like, I don't care about him anymore. I honestly, I don't, I don't care I, about him. I hope the Chinese are, are like smart enough to not to not sell players to like to Juve even if they are the highest bidder or whatever i think they should be a bit like they should be smart and know like they should they should be smart and know like who our rivals are and who to do deals yeah. with well, remember it is marco fasone and yeah. massimo Mirabelli and the chinese to prove of it so i think they know what they're doing they're italian they know what they're doing and I don't know. It's just it's tough. It's tough to, to see a player that you brought through the ranks and who's, who's been here. And I, I wrote it for my article for Italian Football Daily a few days ago. Like, it's tough seeing a player who's, who's grown through the ranks and won his spot, a starting spot. And the Shilio, out of all the players, how many players in the starting squad have been there when we were last in the Champions League? The Shilio, Abati, that's it. Nobody else. Zapata, Zapata. Other than that, no one was here. Like, he just he worked hard to get where he is, like to get a spot. Him leaving for a rival club, he'd be dead to me. Honestly, if you're going to sell him, sell him abroad. Don't sell him in Italy. I don't want to see a young Milan player floor someone else and we regret the transfer. But here's, here's what I say, though, about this year. And I think, you know, he's a guy that he's a player I definitely do like. Um, you know, and I kind of, you know, based on his past, uh, I definitely do I have, you know, I, have, I, feel, I feel for him in a way because I think, you know, he had all these expectations at a young age. Under Allegri, he played well. He played actually very well at a young age. Um, and then he kind of, you know, he, he took a turn for the worse and his performance slipped and a lot of p people were calling for him to get sold and, and everything like that. And he lost his starting role. Uh, a guy like him, I think, you know, you run into the risk of if you do sell him, he does turn into a really good player for a team that you hope is not in your league and that it's not your competition. Um, but I think the problem with Dishio is that I think the, the reason that he's kind of, been so average these past few years it's been also a part of that the 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 plan itself of milan it hasn't been too great obviously we know everything with sylvia berlusconi we're not going to talk about that that's that's done and dusted but i think the fact that 
everything has been so difficult at Milan these past few years that the fans are angry, the fans are frustrated, and they take frustration out on players. And, and that's, that's, it becomes a toxic environment, for, especially for young players. That's what's so important for a team like for Juve, where you see a team like Juve where they have a guy like Rugani and everyone's calling, calling for him to start more and play more. But they have this, they have this system where you know, they, they gradually bring players into the fold and they really sit them down and they, 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 they nurture their mentality and they really you know, bring their mentality up to you know, a winning one. And I think that's what's kind of hurt the progression of a couple of Milan players in recent years. You know, so I, I mean, listen, I'd, I'd like for Milan to keep the Shio in some way, shape, or form. But I think if he does leave, I wouldn't be shocked at all. And in fact, honestly, I wouldn't even be shocked if he did go to Juve because obviously we know Allegri likes him a lot. So, I mean, I guess we'll see how it goes. You know, I'll probably learn a little bit more in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, I think that uh, honestly, yeah. Milan has a, they have, I think they have bigger priorities to deal, to tend to, which um, of course we all know who they are. So I guess we'll see how everything transpires within the next uh, couple of weeks. I actually have some breaking news I just saw on Twitter about the Shilio, uh GDS, the tomorrow's edition. It's already tomorrow in Italy. Oh, because of the Della Sport. They said that uh, Mirabelli is going to meet with the Shilio on Friday and he has decided to leave Milan. So this is what GDS is saying. He say, they're saying that. And then the next tweet from the Milan Bible, it said that, uh, it said that he wants to be sold to either Juventus or a club outside of Italy. So he wants to leave. He's done. I guess the, the the confrontation with the with the car and everything. I think that was the last straw for him, and he's done. So that's what I'm reading here. And GDS isn't always that reliable. Let me like, it's not reliable at all. To be honest with you, I'm more of a Sky Italia guy. I like listening to them more. But um, you know, we'll see. Honestly, I want to move on to a big topic before we take questions. We have a, we have a, a couple of really good questions. Um, renewals for Gianluigi Donnarumma, Suso. We need to renew these guys. It's, it has to be the, f- the first priority before buying players this summer. It's re-sign Suso and re-sign Donnarumma. You cannot lose these guys in, two, in 2018. You, can, you can't lose these guys. It's just, yeah. you know what I mean? You can't, you can't lose core players in your squad if you want to be competitive. Suso has been amazing this year. He's, he's amazing on the ball. Uh, he, he, I hope he never takes, so- never takes penalties again, but... He's a great, he's a great player, and the Donnarumma is the kind of like the the everybody around Europe knows who Donnarumma is now. You gotta renew these guys. Apparently, Raiola wants fifteen percent, and he he we're gonna guarantee Donnarumma the captain's armband, which we have a question about after we can get into. Um, but yeah, can I start with you? What do you think? Like, what do you make? I know you've been reading Twitter and stuff. We've been talking. What do you make of of these of the Suso and Donnarumma talk? Apparently, Suso's dad is optimistic. But. Yeah, I think they 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 agreed. Like the 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 wage always keeps flip, like going up and down depending on what source you ask. But I think Suso is locked down. I think um, we have agreements with him somehow, like with for some random amount. I think Raiola is going to be a problem because mm-hmm. Raiola, we all know, like he's not the one that looks out for like players' uh, own needs. He's more looking for his own. Like, how am I going to get as much money out of this as possible? So I'm only worried more about Donnarumma. I think he will eventually renew, but for how much? Yeah, you know, apparently the, the thing is like four four and a half million euros. Uh, captain's armband and Raiola gets 15% of any future sale. Oh. I, I don't like, if you're going to give him the captain's armband, that kinda, that's kind of a big thing like if, if I he's think it's a future if, thing it is a future thing if you say you're gonna give you the captain's armband he's not gonna leave in the time being like how many times you see a club selling their captain like their their actual kind not like a shilio type that he got it from a bati i also think that. i also think a big thing with donnarumma and i think that a lot of people aren't talking about it is that the fact that he is an 18 year old kid he's still a kid he looks like a man of course um yeah. but it, uh, he's a kid and i think He's a family kid. He's a guy who really just he. You can see he's really passionate. He's really he's a family. He's a family boy who's who's all he's known is Milan, mm-hmm. and I think that you know that's also important for him when when thinking about moving or renewing and everything like that. A guy like him at eighteen, just just thinking about the fact that he could be moving for an astronomical amount to a big club and in Europe when he in a different environment at such a young age. We don't see that that often, and a lot of times, you know, seldom do we see a lot of stars 
a lot of young stars thrive. I mean, we saw uh, Anthony Martial move for a big amount from Monaco to United, and he, he's been okay. I always say he's been a pretty decent player, but he was also very young, and it doesn't. it's always not so much the best time to move when, you know, yes, you're, you're maybe, you know, you have the demand on the market and you're looking to renew, but I think that a guy like Donnarumma, I, I think he will renew, and I think because he's so passionate, he really does love, genuinely loves this club, I think he will renew, even even though he does have a uh, Raiola kind of, you know, the devil and the angel on the shoulder, so to speak, type of thing. Um, I, I know I, I just don't see him moving right away. Um, I think eventually all players have they have a price. I think that's just how modern football is. Um, mm-hmm. You're really not seeing many bandiera uh, around. So yeah, I think a guy okay. like, you know, I mean, I hope a guy like Donnarumma is, becomes one of those flagship players for Milan, but I think I'm optimistic that he will stay and I think he will show his committal to this team and really, really want to be part of a, something special that, that is, is coming to this club. I think for sure. once we win something that's, you know, has any like, like, for example, if when, once we start winning major titles, that's when players start to get locked down. Especially younger players, because and like if they if you win with those young players, it's kind of like they kind of build a bond to the um, uh, with the fans and with the club, and they can't leave. Like someone like Maldini, he like he started he started young and he's like like Donnarumma, and he started winning like they won titles when he was young. So he they he built a strong connection with the club, and I think that if you start young and you start successful long time yeah no i agree it's just it's tough right now because there's so many good teams out there in the world it's gonna be it's gonna take a little bit of process and then hopefully the chinese owners i could tell them like listen we're gonna buy the players it's gonna be a little process but we're gonna make our way back to the top and uh i'm pretty sure hong lee and yang Hong lee have, have actually said this that like, we're, we're bringing the, the club back to the top and and I'm pretty sure they they went to the Barcelona Juve game and they when Dybala scored he said like he yelled out like how much does that guy cost I want him or something like that so I mean if that's what we're gonna if that's where we're gonna go about things like I love it honestly you know what I've always said that I hate the clubs I hate kind of how clubs how football has kind of resorted to you have to have money to compete because really the, you'll see the odds in Cinderella story but re- in reality you have to have money to buy players to compete right now. And even Berlusconi said that in his letter, right? He said, my family can't afford it anymore. Even though I'm not sure. I think he might be able to afford it, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's kind of corrupt. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's tough. And we have the money there. It has to happen. Renew these guys, buy players, and see results in the field. And that's how you, get, and you have a good coach. You have a good core. And you, you know what? Aside from this, let's get right into the question. Dog. There's some questions that involve these guys. There's some actually really, really good questions here. Let's get started. Um, I'll ask. Eh, I'll ask since we're we don't want to take up too much time. I'll ask one of you one question, one of the other. So now I'll answer one myself. So uh, let's see. Let's see one question here. Okay. Um, what are realistic signings in the summer, and what do you think the projected lineup will be with new signings? So let's start with start with Matt. Matt, what 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 do you think? If you can name, I'll, ch- ch- I'll change the question a little bit. Name three realistic signings in a 150 million euro budget and tell me how they fit into the lineup. Um, I'm going to say Cesc Fabregas. Um, just for the simple fact that I think, you know, obviously he's won pretty much everywhere. He's been with Arsenal. He knows he's tried their Premier League. Chelsea, there looks like they're going to win the uh, Premier League title this year, get back into the Champions League. Um, his role is kind of somewhat, I mean, he plays quite a bit for Chelsea, but I think that Chelsea, because they are going to be back in Europe, they may look to add some, it's add in certain areas and really just, um, you know, get a little bit younger. Um, and a guy like Fabregas has been with Barcelona. So I think, you know, he may be a guy that would be willing to try out Italy and really give it a go when he still is in his, is in his prime, excuse me. And it's something that he hasn't tested yet. So I think a guy Fabregas is one of the options. Um, Obama, Yang, I'm not ruling out. I think you know maybe he 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 has some unfinished business to tend to at Milan, um, come back and he maybe be the focal point of this this revolution along with of course Donnarumma and Suso if they renew, um, and I'd probably say um, Musacchio. Musacchio would be a a good addition for Milan's defense just simply because um, it would give Romagnoli a a little bit more of a fleet footed. Um, 
defender, someone younger, someone who's played in the top flight for a couple of years in Spain with Villarreal, and it would give your defense a little bit more security um, and, uh, of course, protect Donnarumma in that a little bit more. So those would be the three guys, I would say. Yeah, okay. Good answer, good answer. So that, that question is from... Who is it from? Let's give you a shout-out. Uh, Cubs fan Walt. Thanks, Cubs fan Walt. Congrats on your World Series last year. Um, <laughs> fun question from Michael Mikey 5 Angelo. Who's a bigger fraud, Montalivo or Sosa? Oh, gosh. I don't want to touch that one. He hates I, Sosa. I, I knew, I knew shout-out to Michael for you know a uh, controversial question, and one that's there's no way around it um, that's going to involve banter. Um, <laughs> I listen, I don't, I don't want to touch that one. If Carlos wants to touch that one, by all means. Uh, <laughs> all right, quick with, question. Who's a bigger fraud, Montalivo or Sosa? Uh, let's go with the lowest percentage of long passes. That's Montalivo. Yeah, so Montalivo. <laughs> Sosa, Sosa okay. can do something. Montalivo can't do anything. Okay, but all right. That's essentially it. So, okay, so... This is actually really good. I'm, I'm going to answer this one, okay? If you can let me ask this one, okay? Who is the player that left Milan and hurted you the most? Or hurt you the most? It's good try on the English, but he, you know what he means. So this is from Pedro Pacheras. He's probably from South America. So, and a few people tweeted back at him. One person said Ibra, one person said Sheva Pirlo Kaka, and one person said Kaka for me, uh, Marco Van Basten. So for me. I wasn't alive. Like it's tough because I'm young, right? I'm only I'm only 18 years old, turning 19. So I wasn't alive to see Marco Van Basten in his prime and stuff like that. I don't think any of us were, right? No, no right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we weren't really. I say, yeah, I'm gonna say Kaká. But the thing is, Kaká won two Champions League with us, and he came back. You know what I mean? So like Kaká is amazing. He loves the club. I think. You know, if I'm going to answer this recently, and a lot of people, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this if, if a lot of people are listening, I miss Mario Bolotelli a lot. <laughs> I love I love Super Mario. I think he has all the qualities to be a top striker, and I think just he's been kind of unlucky, and he's, he's done some things. Like, he's done some things in the past. He's done some things. He's done some things. Like that. He's done Mario? some things giving him a bad image, but he's not like that. And he, like, he doesn't do that stuff anymore. And, like, here's the thing. Like Matt, if we would have had Balotelli this year, he'd score every every freaking penalty, every penalty. Of course, of course like, it, it's going to a point where we get a penalty. I know we're gonna miss now. I knew Suso was gonna miss. I'm like, please don't miss, please don't miss. And he missed. Like Baca missed one, Suso missed one, Niang missed two, and he, he missed two. You know what that led him to Watford. The two pe- two penalty misses gave him a trip to Watford. Who well, though. Well. Yeah, um, apparently they're gonna, they're gonna buy him for eighteen million euros in the summer. So please do. <laughs> Please do. Um, no, I miss Balotelli because I think Balotelli had a really good goal scoring record when he was here. And even though people hate him, some people hate him. Uh, do you, are you guys fond of him? Do you guys like him? I love Balo, but okay. he, he always goes he always two goes. steps forward, one step back. Like, <sighs> this guy always, guy always, he's like, he's like he starts, starts off, off the season or starts off with the new club amazingly. You know, he started off amazing with, with us, he started off amazing with Man City, and then. All of a sudden, he does something stupid or, like, I he just loses interest, I guess. He gets bored easily. I don't know, man. I love him because of what he does. Like, he's, like, he's a funny guy like, <laughs> off off of the pitch. But yeah, on the pitch. Boy, I, like that, I like that. I like that, you know, that uh, that ego. Bad boy. Kind yeah. of like, you know what? Yeah. It's, it's cockiness, remember. but it's also confident. Yeah, I remember it's the one derby. Like, I remember the the one derby a few years ago. It was uh, the bad boy derby, Icardi versus Balotelli. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, was Balotelli really a bad boy? Like he doesn't really like. He, is he really like? Could he be classified as a bad boy? Or he just have like the anger problems. Like I don't know. Is he really like a bad like? Because it seems like off the field he does really nice things for people. Like in England, he used to be like the Santa. He used to go as Santa and like homeless things and give gifts to people and he gave money to random people and stuff. Like I don't know. It just I don't know. I just I miss him because he's he single handedly brought us to Champions League that one year when he came in January. He single handedly brought us there, and he had a really good goal scoring ratio. He had like what, like thirty goals in fifty games or something like that. Something like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. That's on, on, a, on a crap team too. On a crap team, he had Kevin Constant, Soli Muntari. <laughs> no, man. Don't bring <laughs> us back to those days. Don't don't bring Soli Muntari yeah. to here, bro. You have uh, Amro on our back. 
Stefan Cokehead Al Shirawi. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but like these teams are bad. And I, I just and Balotelli last year, honestly, or last season, he, when he was on the pitch, he was our best player when he played. When he played games, he was our best player. Sure, he didn't score all the time, but like he got unlucky. Like I remember the one game he was frozen on, and he literally ran the whole pitch, took a long shot at the crossbar in the 90th minute to win it. Like that's just unlucky. Like if it was another player, would have went bar down or name, but for Balotelli, hits the crossbar and goes out. It's just, I don't know, I miss him. I, I think he deserves another chance for the national team. I think he just deserves another shot because he's playing well for Nice. And I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's racist. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I love him. And I, I miss him on the team. I like, do you, guys see, do you guys see his video for Zapata? Of course. No. Of course. You didn't see that? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah did you see it? Yeah. You saw it, right? Zapata. Zapata. And then the Italian at the end, he said, like, you guys are, not, you guys are going to stop talking now or something like that, right? So he said something like that. I don't know. It's a little controversial comment, but he's a funny guy. Um, I, I love. Yeah. Did you see his post on Instagram today? <laughs> he took a. He t- it was a picture of Kim Kardashian with a bikini. He was kind of like fat, and he freaking put Kanye. What are you doing, man? Or something like that. <laughs> you, you go look. You have to look at it after the podcast. Yeah. I died. I'm like, holy ball of savage. Okay, Karas, for you. Yes. The next question. Hello. This is from uh, Vint- Vintage Muntari. What a Twitter account. Yeah. Vintage Muntari. Do you consider Suso, Romagnoli, and Bonaventura truly unsellable? How much do you think they're worth and what teams would suit them? Uh Bonaventura, in my opinion, he is unsellable. I think he he loves this club too much. The way he plays sometimes I feel like he's literally the only player, like at least in the years beforehand, that he was like dying and he was like he always poured his heart out. Um so you said the two other players were Suso and uh, uh, Romagnoli. Romagnoli. Uh, Suso could go. Suso has spoken a lot that you know uh, Milan isn't his like final stop or whatever. He's always said this kind of stuff. He said if if Barca wants him or Friel wants him, he'd obviously go there. So I think Suso, um, we could tie him down for the next maybe two or three years once we get to Champions League or once if he like performs extremely well. We could get, we could sell him for around thirty to thirty-five, like maybe twenty-five to thirty million, something around that. Romagnoli is the same thing, unless Romagnoli like decides he wants to stay with us, which he will. Romagnoli can go with, with yeah, with either or. But I would want him to stay. If we were to sell him, um, Chelsea wanted him for fifty million. So oh yeah, and apparently for some reason our Twitter account came out and said, uh. We're not. He's not for sale. I've never seen that in my life. But apparently, we tweeted. We tweeted. It was so weird. I woke up the one morning. It was like, amidst the reports, we are safe to say that Romagnoli is untouchable and he's not being sold to Chelsea. <laughs> Everybody was like, like Beatrice. What the Beatrice. heck? What the heck are you saying, Beatrice? <laughs> but, and everybody's like, Batana, Beatrice. <laughs> it means like go. But um. No, yeah, that's a good answer. I think it's tough. I think Romagnoli will stay. Like, yeah. Romagnoli would be a guy who will stay. And uh, Suso obviously could leave. But, like, I, I feel like he's part of us, too. Like, he's, one, he's one of us. Uno di noi, right? He's one of us. Yeah. But we'll see. Okay, next question from Matt. That's cool. Um, the Squants 21. How much, how much money should Milan give to Donnarumma? Is $3.5 million too high, too low, or just about what he should make? Um... <laughs> I'm going to go with the conservative answer and say they got to pay whatever it takes to keep him here. Um, <laughs> now, nah, I yeah. honestly, I think I got like Donnarumma. I think, you know, when you, when you, when you're trying to do something different, you're trying to bring in something special at Milan after a, a, several years of disappointment. I think it's very important. It's actually vital that Milan lock up Donnarumma, pay him whatever he wants. I think pay him like the star he is, pay him like, the champion I think he definitely will become and pay him like he is the centerpiece of this revolution. So for me, um, I have four and a half. That seems like, honestly, I, if I'm, a, if I'm, if I'm Milan's financial advisor, I would say pay, pay the man four and a half million uh, euro per year, uh, make him the focal point of this revolution and, um, you know, erase any doubt that Milan fans have in their minds and let everyone sleep better at night. So yep. four and a half million. Yeah. Okay, and this is from this is came five minutes ago from uh, Alisam one oh zero four one one zero. 
Do you, uh, Kalas, just take this one. Do you guys believe Milan will become what they once was? Once they once were? Eventually. I think that if everything goes right, I think if the Chinese, they have the right direction, and I think we start to get serious. We, we already have a serious coach. Um, we just need the players. Like We just need to buy good players, and we want them to stay. That's it. And I think that we could eventually, within the next five years, I could see us reaching, you know, Champions League quarterfinals, semifinals, stuff like that, which is mm -hmm. a okay. lot better than what we do right now. But okay. yeah, the, I, I definitely could see us doing it. Okay, I'll take and I think the next question is from uh, Sagato underscore Lorenzo. He says he read today that Ibra would like to be a director. At, I don't know if you guys saw it. So he, apparently, yeah, Ibra wants to be a director at Milan after one year at LA Galaxy. And he's a uh, Lorenzo says he's a winner. What are your What are your thoughts on Ibra in the front office? And I honestly, I would die to have Ibra in our front office. I feel like he would have like a uh, a mentality that listen, I'm gonna offer you this. You don't want to join us? We'll just go to the next guy. Like, you know what I mean? Something like that. Like he won't. He'll kind of be that guy. He'd be like, listen, you're a good player. We're offering you this, and if you guys don't want to take it, then we're gonna bring this offer elsewhere because. We're not gonna sit there and lose a and lose a negotiation. Like it, it, he'll he'll basically he'll instill it in play in players that it's an honor to play for the red and black, yeah. and yeah, he's a champion, right? He's he's a, I and I and th those are the things too that I, you know I, I want to see former players who love this team yep. want to be a part of its of, of its future. Um, restoration its future growth you know we we, we, we see it at juve uh ned vet is part of their front office he's in the thick of things you see him celebrating when they score um same thing with zanetti with inter um obviously the priority should be to get maldini in some way shape or form a role with this team i think he it's just everything i mean i'm not even going to say that he deserves it i think that's understood but a guy like having ibrahimovic a champion mentality a champion who knows how to play in europe and knows what what quality looks like because he's played around it his entire career. Um, I definitely welcome his director role, but um, I honestly Maldini would be my priority first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know what though, but Ibra, like I, I love Ibra. He just scores when he wants, whenever he wants. Like you see his post about his leg. He's like, I play on one leg anyways, so no worries, guys. I'll play on one leg or something like that. I don't know <laughs> for sure. You know, biggest leg. That guy's jacked, man. Anyways, <laughs> um, no, that's a really good question, Lorenzo. You know what? I think yeah, I would love having you in the front office. You gotta have players like that. I don't like Nedved at Juve. I just I hate everything about that club. I think if you follow me on Twitter, you know that. But um, <laughs> basically, I I do agree with Matt. You gotta bring players like that in. And just before we go to the next question, Matt, or maybe Kadas, have you seen it too? The one picture of Nedved with his hands with his hands. Yeah. On his <laughs> with Absolutely. the yellow card yeah, and then yeah. so he was out for the 2003 champions league final i think that's the most iconic photo in yeah. champions league history no nope. <laughs> he got he got the he got the yellow card that suspended him for the next match when was, was, was the oh, pillow crying one that was the oh, one that, that, that was when really they lost in the, in the ucl final against barca a few years ago okay yeah yeah that, i love that even more than yeah, it's sad because I, I love yeah. pillow but i feel he's a, ever since i read that i saw his book it's just, he's a snake i don't like him yeah. anymore now, are you a fan of Pirlo anymore? Like, what's your, what's your take on him? Um, uh, I don't know, man. It, it's the situation was, it, you know, not to get too much into it to beat a dead no, horse. I don't. But the situation was, and it looked like Leg Allegri thought he was done. Most Milan fans thought he was done. I think the reason why he didn't come back, or you know, he didn't stay rather, is the fact that I think that Allegri thought he would slow down the tempo and what they were trying to do offensively and with their formation. Um, yeah. I, listen, I think you know. It, it's difficult when the team doesn't want you and they that they think you're done and you're past it, and a team like Juve who who were on the rise. I, I I don't blame a guy like Pirlo going to a team like Juve if you're wanted by a champion championship contender. Why not? That's how I feel. I mean, I think it's yeah. tough for me. It's tough for most Milan fans to say like I would never do that. I would never do this when you're not the one sitting at the table and you're saying you can join Juve with a bunch of different stars and be part of you know a a five six six time uh, Juve uh, cha uh, Scudetto champion. So I, I, I don't know. I wasn't opposed to him leaving to Juve. No, I missed the book. It's the book. It was, yeah. yeah. The book. It, of course, it leaves it. It definitely left a sour taste in my mouth for you to say something about a club that you won the Champions League at um, twice. Yeah. <laughs> and now, so. It doesn't matter if you win the Champions League or not. It's this sort of professionalism that you need to have. 
Yeah. Like, you can't go around bad mouthing clubs that you've played for. You know, it's it's not good. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's just it's no. you should you should like you're you're a professional player. You should you should be professional. If you have bad opinions, keep them to yourself at least until you retire. You know? Yeah, like you're still playing football, right? And they yeah. see you're still playing, and and it's like, you know, you know what my problem is? Like, did you see? Did you guys see? Uh, I don't know if you guys see uh, AC Milan, Milan club Montreal when he came to Montreal to play a game at NYCFC. Yeah. Uh, like he was like the the guys met him there with a scarf, and he wasn't even smiling with the scarf or anything like that. It looks like he was just like he didn't want to. I, I don't know. I just like if, when you win two Champions League with the club, you should have a lot a deep respect for the club because you won. You won two Champions League there, and then that translated to you playing really well with the World Cup with the Nazionale and winning the World Cup in 2006. And I don't know. I just I don't want to talk about it too much. I, it still, it still angers me. But okay, next question. Next question. Next question. This is also from uh, Lorenzo. He says, "Is Donnarumma too young to be a captain?" I'll start it off. Well, I'll answer this one. It's a good question. See, Lorenzo, it's a really good question because Donnarumma, he. Like he he looks like a man. He's like a man in the net. He's not a like I'm I'm a year older than Donnarumma. I feel like a little kid compared to him. Um, <laughs> like and Matt, Matt, you're a couple. You're like a couple years older. How um, how many years older? I are you? am. Uh, I am six years older than him. Yeah, and and if you're still beside him, you'd look at you'd be like a little kid to him, right? Yeah, I'd be looking for his autograph. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Right. It's just weird. And I I truly honestly I think he could lead a team. He kind of be like a buffon. He's a captain. Um. Even though he lied about the goalie Mutari, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, um, no, Donnarumma could be the guy to be the captain. But I think, like right now, I like, could you see Romagnoli as I could see Romagnoli as captain. Like he has the green and the passion to, to be captain. I think Bonaventura yeah. should be captain, in my opinion. Yeah, right it's now. tough to it's tough though right now because he's like I don't know Romagnoli is like the defender, yeah. right? And Milan's already yeah. always been a club to have great defenders. And yeah. Romagnoli is kind of one of the future, of, like the future of Italy, in defense. I don't know. Like I feel like I, I choose either Bonaventura, Romagnoli, or Donnarumma. We always want to have an Italian captain. I don't know. I, just call me call me a domestic guy, but I I always feel like I like I actually like the idea of Italian Milan when it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't mind it because like you know put the Italian players in there and see what happens. You know you get the because there was a time in Syria when you were only allowed to field a few foreign players, right? There's a yeah. little bit of time yeah. when you only feel like two or three or four foreign players, and that's it. So, and I'm not a fan of teams like in you know I know I know uh, Danny Russo is gonna kill me, Matt, but like Napoli, they don't have they have like one Italian in the lineup. Like, uh, how can you? I don't know. Like, like Roma and Napoli, what do they have? Like three Italians in all in the starting lineup at 22 players. Inter's getting up there, and it looks Inter, like they Inter's getting some more. Italians. Interesting some more with Candreva, Gabriadini, uh, Dembrosio. We're the kings of having Italian players. Right <clears throat> yeah, we have even even Juventus has been kind of becoming a refugee camp a little bit, uh, as, as some Twitter users would say. They're kind of uh, they're bringing in a lot of foreigners, like they have the, even like Pjanic. Their attack is Argentine, Manzukic, uh, Marquisio doesn't start anymore. It's Kadira. Um, they only have the Buffon. They have Buffon, Barzali, Bonucci, Chiellini, and they have like Dani Alves, uh, Lee Steiner. Alexandro, they don't have many Italians either. But Milan, even though they're even though they're not, we're not as good, we've always kind of been committed to bringing in more Italian players. You see, our Italian sometimes we, sometimes we field seven or eight Italian players, right? Oh yeah, for and sure. It's it's most something. Italian, I, think the, I think the most Italian team is uh, from correct is Sassuolo. Sassuolo, the one time they had a full lineup of Italians. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Atalanta's pretty decent. They have like Cassie and stuff, but they're pretty decent too. But you know what? When you have more teams and more Italians playing, it translates to the, it translates to the uh, to the national team as well. Um, because if you look at England, right? England has ninety thousand professional teams in their leagues, and their national team is still has still not been able to figure it out. So, and because you know why? In the English league, none of their players, all their players and every team are all foreign. They're all foreign. Look at the top three teams and tell me how many English players there are there. There's none. There's no good English players. It's like Deli Ali and Harry Kane. And that's from one team. You know what I mean? So it's good. I want Italians to come up and play. I know like Kalas, you're Egyptian, but no, I, I, don't I, personally, I don't care as long as the chemistry is good. Yeah. And, uh, personally, Italy is one of like, my favorite teams to watch on, like, internationally in the World Cup because, you know, 
our national team isn't that great, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I would. You know what? As long as as long as Milan perform well, um, if it's bring more Italians, sure. If it's bring less Italians, I don't I don't care as long as Milan does well. And that there was also a problem. I remember it was like a few years back that there was kind of like a rift between the two, uh, like between the Italians and the non-Italians. Mm-hmm. So as long as that doesn't, yeah. that's not a problem. I'm fine with it. Yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, just back to the captain thing. Sorry we got kind of off track on it. Um, that's a, that's how kind of podcasts are sometimes. Eh? Like, you just kind of talk about something and you – I don't know, I, I love discussing stuff. I, I can go on and on with this stuff. But, uh, no, yeah, it's just – Donnarumma, I think he could be the captain. I think he really can take the armband. If he's – but he has to be committed. You can't be captain. Yeah. Be, okay, like, I might, I'm going to stay for four or five years here and maybe we'll like see you after do. that. You can't be like that. You have yeah. to be committed to this team. And I feel like he will be. I feel like he loves the club. You see him, he claps to the, the Club Rasud every single game. He claps to them. He uh, he kisses. He blows kisses to them and stuff like that. Every time we score, he'll fist pump to them. Like you don't do that if you're not if you're not a huge Milanista inside. And I think if and I hate Raiola. I hate Raiola so much. I, I he's a great agent for his profession, but he's a scum. He's scum, right? You can't. You can't you can't uh, rely on him or you can't trust him at all, right? So I think you know, a Hamshik and kind of oh Hamshik you know. the life contract. Yeah, yeah, no, Hamshik's a ha, actually no way, Matt Hamshik would count as a Bendiero, no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's been there. He's, he's a flagship player for Napoli. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I you know what? I, I don't know. I, I feel like Donnarumma can has the qualities. Uh, only time will tell, to be honest. Yeah, yeah only time will He's tell. It's hard, to, it's hard one to... Step, one really step good. at a time. Let's ex- let's let's yeah. extend the guy first yeah. uh, and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, okay. So you know what? I think we're going to start wrapping things up here. Um, we've had a, a consistent number of viewers, live viewers, and I'm sure people will uh, check it out uh, later on. And, you know, you, you guys were great guests. We'll definitely bring you guys on more often. Um, again, uh, Mike, the other... The other co-host he uh he's studying tonight but he's i think he's done exams this week so he's gonna be on here most uh most of the times too he's he lives like an hour away from me so um yeah you know this is really fun i uh i like i like discussing everything i really appreciate you guys being on here so matt and karas thanks so much no no man don't worry about it thank you thank you so much yeah no worries so just before we end here guys you guys want to follow us on twitter oh you know what you know what? I have another question. Lorenzo sent me another question. Uh, he, he wants to know quick uh, Champions League posi- uh, predictions. You know what? We'll do that right before we get off. So, Matt, Matt, what do you think? What's your uh, final four? Who's going to win the Champions League? Um, whoo, I think, uh, you know what? I think Real Madrid's going to win. Yeah. yeah. Cristiano? Yeah. yeah. It's been that yeah. year for him. He's got his, he got his, uh, his uh, international trophy, and I think uh, – you know, although most people are going to say it's Juve and Juve look like the favorite right now, the way they're playing, um, I think Real Madrid, they just have that mentality where they, they, they know how to win the Champions League trophy. And I think, you know, they, uh, I think they're going to do it. Yeah. Um, Caras, it's, you think Real Madrid too? It's going to be Real Juve. Yeah. And I think Real will have a high chance of winning this. Mm-hmm. But Juve could pull it off, to be honest. Yeah. I think, like Juve are very, very slow. Absolutely. Yeah. See, Here's the thing, I tweeted last week, and I, I you don't understand. Like I was like my my hands were shaking tweeting it, but I said, I said that you are too strong to not win the Champions League this year. Oh, they they're very strong. I mean, yeah. and, and that's why I said I'm like they're a strong team. I don't see anybody knocking them aside. They don't look, and the thing is, they they don't look phased. They never do no. look phased by any type of situation. You know, they, everyone was like, oh, Barcelona, this and Barcelona. They, you know, they they approach every game with this mentality that. We're the better team. We're gonna win. Like yeah. they have that mentality, and yeah. I think that's all. Again, that's all. On the, that's on the coach, and that's also got on guys like Bonucci, Chiellini, yeah. and uh, Buffon, of course, yeah. to really just drive that home. Because I think yeah. if you look up and down their team; they're very strong. Very and strong. If they win, I wouldn't be shocked in the slightest. I, I like you don't understand. I don't want them to win, though. Like I don't want them to win the Champions League. I, I just I'm saying from an unbiased standpoint that they're one. They're the strongest there. I don't think. I, I think. Bayern strong in the Real Madrid. That was some terrible officiating. I think Bayern would have would have won that match. Bayern's a, if Bayern was in it still, I'd choose Bayern to win. Yeah. But I think I, honestly to get to, to wrap it up here, I think that um, should Atleti. I think should, Atleti has a chance. You know what? Should, they should, should they should they move on and get go to the final? 
I think pound for pound, I think they're the team that matches up the best against Juve. Um, they just have a strong defense. Godin is a very good defender. They have a good mm-hmm. back line. They got their stars up front. They have, yeah, they have just – they. I think they, they pose the biggest matchup to uh, – to Juventus just because I think that Juve have beaten Real Madrid a couple of years ago to get to the final. And I think, you know, a team like Atletico, they're hungry. Simeone's hungry, especially after losing out in the final a couple of years ago. Um, a couple con- consistently the past few years, they've been losing out. So I think a team like Atleti would be hungry and uh, really take advantage of a final appearance. No, for sure. You know what? Atleti, uh, uh, Simone, Simeone, he plays Catanaccio to an extent. They eh? like a kind of modern version Catanaccio. They're very defensive. They don't score that many goals, but they don't concede that many goals either. No. So, you know what? And here's the thing. When you get into the final, whoever it is, it's one game, right? Anybody can win one match. Yeah. Any- right. So, yeah. yeah, and yeah. you know what, Atletico, I think if Atleti, if they, if they go to the final, there's, I cannot, there's no way they're going to lose three straight finals. It's a pity to think they about this. They were, they were seconds away from winning a couple years ago mm-hmm. if it yeah. wasn't for Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos. So, uh, I think, yeah. you know, this, is, this would what, be their third appearance? Or yeah, and third, third, appearance. third appearance in the final in four years. So, I mean, listen, I mean, something's got to give, I think. Maybe yeah. this is the year, but who knows? I think it's going to be interesting either way. Yeah, and also thank God. Apparently, uh, Marsa from Spain reports that Simeone uh, rejected the blank check from Inter to be the coach next year. I don't want. I don't want wants, him. He wants to win with City. He wants to yeah. win with, with with Atletico first. Yeah. I think that's kind of the thing he wants to give them and the city, and mm-hmm. then just kind of set out to the sunset, so to speak. Yeah. See, I, I don't want him to be coach of Inter because Inter might be scary. I don't want that to happen. I know. I don't want Simeone here. He's a great manager. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just start wrapping it up here. So, guys, if you want to follow uh, Karas on Twitter, it's at 98KKT. He's got a top Twitter. Only 56 followers, though. It's kind of weak, yeah, man. You guys got to improve it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to follow Matt, uh, I'm sure you've seen a Twitter account before. He's the uh, emoji, emoji merchant. Um, uh, don't be like that. No, I'm a, I'm a, I, 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 I'm a gift merchant. I'll admit he's that. a gift merchant. And now he's the, uh, now he's the, hashtag breaking the lines merchant with the videos and stuff. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So his Twitter is at Matt underscore Santangelo. You can sound it out. Santangelo. <laughs> Adangelo. You can see and he has a yeah. picture of him at San Sudo and went to the the Derby last year. You went to the three nothing one, right? See C si, si, Senor. Oh my si. God. How crazy do you like do you have videos from that game? Oh but I have plenty. It's Oh, I kind of want to see him one day. Cause did you did you go crazy for all the goal? Like and like when Icardi hit the post, Paulo, Paulo, Paulo. Yeah, that was. I, it's funny. <laughs> Real quick before we wrap up, but uh, yeah. oddly enough, uh, that game, what's his name, was sitting uh, a couple rows in front of us. Andre Modic. Mo- oh, oh, the youth youth player. Yeah, the Bosnian. Yeah, yeah. He was he was sitting in the row a couple rows before us and. I told my friends, I was like, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's Andre Modic. And they were like, no, that's not. I was like, yeah, it is. And we checked his Instagram later on after the game. And we yeah. saw his seats because he tweeted a picture of where he was sitting. And that was him. Yeah, that's awesome. Did he yeah. celebrate when they scored or anything? Remember? Like, nah, he- because he kind of, he, it's kind of like that thing where like, he's yeah. so proud and he just wants to kind of play. He wants to be incognito. Incognito, even though he's not even that popular. But <laughs> did, yeah, you, right. did you go with your brother or with your buddies? Uh, I went with my parents and a couple of oh, parents. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah. You know, that's an unreal. I want to experience that one day. I will, but that's insane. Yeah, guys. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, Luca underscore Laporta, I guess I would be a, what am I, Matt? What, what merchant am I? You're a, uh, you're, oh, you're, oh, 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 you're a like merchant. I am a like merchant. I like, I, like, honestly, Matt, you know how many likes I have on Twitter? I have 136,000 likes. Yeah, you know, you, you, you make people work for a retweet, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I give everybody the likes and I, uh, I'll throw a little like uh, Ibala banter in there too and stuff like that and, and uh, the daily joke of the day and stuff like that. But yeah, that's it. Uh, and if you guys want to follow, uh, I'm co- the co-founder of uh, the Milan guys. We've been around for uh, since 2014 and me and my friend Mike, we've uh, really grown it. He's done a lot. Of, he's done way more work than I have into it because I kind of got busy with school and stuff. And he's kind of really kept it up. And uh, he's been awesome. And, you know, the account's growing. And we're hoping to hit 6,000 uh, 6, followers soon. And also follow uh, Matt's uh, Twitter account. He's, uh, is it just Milan Bros? It's at, at AC Milan Bros. 
Yeah, he has a good account too, and he did it. He has a blog too with the his derby and stuff like that, and and yeah, it's really good. So yeah, give us a follow on Twitter. I'm sure we'll follow Milanisti back. We, it's always nice to interact with Milanisti and stuff. And honestly, I just I thank all of you for tuning in. You know, this is the first episode, and you know we we really appreciate your feedback too. If you want to see something else in the podcast, and we can add to it if you want different guests, whatever. Just let me know. Send us a DM. Send us a tweet, and any whatever. And guys, this is uh. Luke Laporta signing off for the night. It's been really, really fun. It's been so fun that we were aiming for a 40-minute, kind of 35-minute thing, and it's been okay. like over an hour, which is whatever, first episode. Minutes. So, yeah. Karas, thank you so much. Matt, thank you so much. And Milanisti, Forza Milan this Sunday. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao ragazzi. Bye.